Joining me now to discuss Rebecca Grant, National Security Analyst and President of Iris Independent Research, and Lisa Daftari, Editor-in-Chief of the Foreign Desk. Thank you both for being with me. Lisa, I, I'm going to start with you. Um, you just heard the President say, does Islam hate us? What, let me ask you about the speech itself. Is he really the right person to deliver it? Will he be able to have the kind of effect that he wants to have with it? I think he has a very opportune moment right now. Whether or not he's the right person for the job, he is the president of the United States. And once he leaves the United States, he represents you and me and everyone else here. Meaning, right now, the Arab world has experienced a large shift, and that is uh, with two main goals in mind. And that's turning from this Shiite-dominated sphere of Iran that's dominating the Middle East, uh, and that's been the alliance of the United States under President Obama. And the second is to keep this extremist uh, Islamist terrorism outside of their borders. So here you have dozens of, of Arab nations, Sunni nations. Um, we have Saudi Arabia wanting to have this relationship with the West. And we're no longer in an age of allies. Foreign policy now is an interest-aligned policy. And right now, all of these interests are aligned. We find a, a nice parallel. This is where we can actually see uh, Donald Trump shine. He's a CEO, and he's going to be sitting around with a, a lot of other CEOs the same interests as he does. And, you know, he's not a man of, of words and of nuance. And I think that's where we see a lot of trouble in the past when he has spoken about Islam with these blanket statements. But at the same time, if they know that, that he's coming there with this intention of curbing radical Islam and with the intention of having a reset with Sunni nations, I think he's going to have a very positive outcome. Uh, Rebecca, the president's policy advisor, Stephen Miller, is writing that speech, which could be problematic. He was also behind the travel ban. What will you be listening for tomorrow? Well, it is an opportune time, and I'm going to be listening for the president to set the right tone. But let's also remember, Saudi Arabia is a military ally. They're comrades in arms. The Saudis have been fighting alongside us in Syria. The Saudi Air Force participated in the relief of the siege of Kobani back in 2014. So this is a long relationship between military allies. I'll expect to hear Trump acknowledge the work of the kingdom and some of the other GCC states in taking on the Islamic terrorist threat and ISIL up in Syria. I'll expect him to set a particular tone. And I think we'll hear more, too, about the recently concluded arms deals, those are all set to strengthen ballistic missile defense and other aspects of security in the Gulf, all things that need to be done. Lisa, let me ask you about that arms deal. And the president, we've heard him today emphasizing the business aspects of it, but right. we're still talking about arms to Saudi Arabia. It is obviously political as well. What's the meaning behind right. it? Oh, absolutely. The State Department already put out a statement this morning saying that this deal was meant to, A, strengthen that relationship with Saudi Arabia and to validate them in our relationship, uh, but also to say that we've got your back if you should have to go against Iran. And I think that those were the goals of, of this trip, to say to Saudi Arabia, we support you, we acknowledge the help that you've given us, you know, to, again, turn from this Shiite alliance policy that the United States has had for the last eight years and to go forward and say we want to strengthen our relationship with the more moderate uh, countries in the Middle East. And I think this was a good step forward. It's also obviously going to create jobs. And I think Donald Trump was very, very vocal in, in making that statement this morning and saying we are creating jobs with this deal. And this is what his forte is, deals. And I think that's the way that this trip should be looked at. He's out there to do what he's good at uh, and to represent the United States while he's at it. Um, I think a lot of people perceive it as Shia line, but there might be a difference of opinion on that particular aspect. Rebecca, let, let me ask you, um, you have, the pre you, you, in talking about the, the speech itself and, and the way that it will be received, what is, the, what is the critical issue for Trump here? I mean, it sounds like it's going after Islamic extremism, and, and can Saudi really be a reliable partner in that respect? Well, we're waiting to see, but there are a couple of critical issues. Yes, I think Saudi Arabia can be a reliable partner there. I think they've more than proven that uh, on the battlefield, among other things. And we want them to continue with us. So what Trump has to do in this speech is, I think, prepare the groundwork for whatever happens next. Don't forget, he's going up to NATO, where we'll be dealing with more discussion about how to carry on with Afghanistan, Iraq, and Syria. So he wants to go up there presenting a very united front with Saudi Arabia. And I 
think he wants to help lay the foundation for better security in the Gulf itself. Remember, Iran is very close. What's the ballistic missile flight time from Iran to Saudi Arabia? It's about eight minutes. So they have a lot of security issues there, long term to work. Uh, Islamic terrorism is one of them, but there are other security issues too. He's going to want to get all that squared away and go forward on a strong basis. All right. National Security Analyst Rebecca Grant and the Foreign Desk's Lisa Daftari, thank you both for joining me. Thank you.